Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish, as requested by you. And this is part 99, horses, specifically layered, uh, a layered approach, as opposed to a dry brush approach, which will be in the next video. But uh, yeah, how to layer paint horses. So we'll be painting this horse, uh, I believe it's from Warhammer Fantasy. And uh, the key is when you're doing a layered approach is you got to accentuate the muscles of the horse. Most nicely sculpted horses have a lot of definition with their muscles and we're going to accentuate that today and work with those as a guideline. So we'll start off with dryad bark and as always I thin down my paints slightly with some acrylic matte medium. And uh, that way it's nice and thin because we'll be applying a lot of layers to this these areas. You don't want to, uh, to clump it up too much especially with your base coat. And I always recommend doing, if you're going over with a dark color like Dryad Bark, going over a black primer. You gotta set your primer, of course, to whatever color you really want for your horses. Light colors, lighter primer like a gray, darker primers, uh, sorry, darker primers of like a black for dark colored miniatures. So as I said, we're gonna start off with a nice, just solid base coat of Dryad Bark, which is a nice, uh, almost chocolatey brown from uh, the Citadel range. And just get a nice solid coat before proceeding to any others. And as I said, as you can see on this model, there's a lot of definition. And when you're layering paints, as opposed to like something like a dry brush, which will give a lot of texture, the key is you have, well, you can still mimic texture with a layer approach, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna build up layers and use the muscles or approximately where the muscles should be as defining parts of this model. And I'll let them define how I wanna highlight up the model. Now, if your model doesn't have a lot of definition, uh, you can build up the, the definition in however way you wish, but just keep a realistic muscle scheme, basically. So now we're going to take a little bit of Gorthor Brown. So it's a two-to-one mix of Gorthor Brown and Dryad Bark, and we're going to use the muscles, as I said, to highlight up this model. Leave the, the recesses and the edges, the Dryad Bark, and then build up the muscles accordingly. So we're going to just basically exaggerate them in this tutorial. That way we get the nice appearance um, of the horse. So as you can see, I'm just building up the, the this layer a little bit, and uh, just using the muscles as the defining steps, and just following them as I go. So you see, leaving a little bit in the reset along the edges here. And here on the neck as well. And the typical rule of thumb is that the muzzle, or the like, face of the horse, is typically the lightest color. So it'll, especially the nose area, so typically that will be the lightest area on the horse. So the very last color will always be, you know, that will be the, the dominant color on the nose. And then you can paint the mane however you wish. Um, horses, typically a horse with this color would have either a brown or a black mane and tail. But uh, you can pretty much choose any color scheme you want. I just tend to go with more realistic tones. So as you see, we're pretty much done highlighting up the musculature for the first layer of colors. And now we're gonna add some more Gorthor Brown and repeat this process. But of course, as we do with typical layering, we're gonna go further away from the recesses and further away from the edges. And it'll, as I did with all my paints, I thin them down using acrylic medium. That way they, they're nice and thin and they blend quite nicely. So right now they look a little bit strong but it will blend and dry slightly darker and more blended in. You can use something like wet blending, but this approach with layering is pretty much, um, is pretty easy and it tends to get some really great results. So as you can see, I'm just following those same lines, starting with the defining raised edges by themselves and working my way towards the recesses and towards uh, the edges and uh, that's it. And at each step, we're going to go closer and closer to these defining lines and build them up. Once again, working with the neck and the front muscles. As you see, there's still a lot of musculature on this model, as most nicely horse models do have. And now we're just going to use Gorthor Brown on its own and just do the very edges of these areas. As you can see, we're really exaggerating the muscles, but that's what you want to do when using mini when painting miniature horses, is that you really want to exaggerate those muscles if you're doing a layered approach, because that way it just really makes them look musculature and, and really gives the, the, the model a lot of character. 
right now, going along the very edges with the Gorthor Brown. We're using very chocolatey browns, and as I said, you can basically repeat this process with any color scheme you want for the horses, but you just the same approach. Follow the lines, the muscles, let them be the, the defining lines of the miniature that you paint. And as I said, we're going to finish off with the, the nose, and of course, since Gorthor Brown is going to be the lightest color for the skin, we'll make sure that the nose is Gorthor Brown predominantly. And that's it. So now we've painted up all the skin. So now I'm just going to show you how to paint the hooves. Um, for the hooves, I always base coat them. Uh, like I start with the black primer, and then I use gray liner for the hooves because the gray liner is, is a dark matte gray from Reaper, and it's great for mimicking hooves because it has the nice matte finish to it, and it's a gray, so it's not just pure black. And it has a little bit of character to it. You leave the the very edges, the very top edges of the hoof, uh, the black. And uh, of course, if you didn't prime black, just use Abaddon black to, to base coat them and then go gray liner over them. And then I mixed in a little bit of administratum gray and then just painted the very bottom of the hoof with the administratum gray. And then finally for the hair, I'm not going to show how to do the, the tail and the mane because it's just the same as hair. So I recommend checking out any of my miniature painting 101s on hair and you'll see any color of hair you want to see. So for this one, I did my typical black mane. So as you can see, I actually highlighted it up with some dark grays using gray liner and then a one-to-one -one mix of a mist random gray and gray liner. That way it has some great definition to it. And it's a really nice color scheme of matching mane and uh, skin tones. Most bay horses like this one would have uh, a black mane and black tail. But of course, you can go in any color you want. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. And stay tuned for part 100, which is just around the corner. We're about to hit the millennial. It's going to be fun. But if you don't want to wait for next week, check out the warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my other YouTube channel, where not only we get to see the next six months worth of miniature painting 101 episodes, before anyone else, you get to see over 100 start-to-finish painting tutorials, battle reports, face-off episodes, an Airbrush 101 series, just some awesome wargaming content. So go check out the warp. I think you'll love it. Stay tuned for more videos. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.